And welcome back, you beautiful listeners and poppers out there. We are back for another moment in the thrilling conclusion of Chapter 1 of Cyber City. We've had two explosive performances from from two of the groups. And, of course, in every kind of music festival or music competition, there's going to be the media, and they need to get their two cents on how they feel about everything. And, of course, they got the biggest DJ to be the personality for on screen. Yeah! Oh, this is DJ Jazzy Jazzmire, and I'm here backstage here in the... Here, the Battle of the Bands, baby. And wow, we have just seen some crazy performances going on. And what about what Miss Holly laid down for all of us? I do believe we see Mr. Loverboy right here coming by us right now. DJ Jazzy Jazzmeyer rushes over with the cameraman coming upon Alistair. Alistair, you look at... As a little date, and you're in a daze because Holly went and did that, made that declaration in front of the entirety of Cyber City. Yeah, yeah, she did. Um, so here's the thing Mm -hmm. as soon as I hear DJ Jazzy Jazz, because he is a loud and b distinct, um, as well as uh, seeing the camera, I'm gone. Like, I, 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 I am just absolutely gone. Roll me your athletics for me, please. I, I want to see how much of a distance you create between... He's running away! We can't let this chance for an interview pass us by, ladies and gentlemen, my little... All right, that is body... You said athletics? Oh, yes. All right. I mean, I, you create so much of a distance... Listeners, before he continues, I want to interrupt here and I- explain something as to why he suddenly went quiet. <laughs> um, see, I have a uh, four levels in Dex, and I'm still new to the whole cyberpunk uh, system. So uh, I know that it's a D10 system. I know that it's an exploding system. And I know that the amount of levels you have in a skill matter. I have four levels in my athletics, and my dex gives me a a 7-point modifier, plus I rolled a d10. Um, I rolled a 10 on that, so my grand total for this is 21 plus 3. When I say Alistair is gone... He's gone! DJ Jazzmire, he does not see you, but we get to start something a little sooner now. I imagine if this was an anime, there would just be that blinking dotted line of where he used to be. (laughs) Yep. Jazzy is just, wow. You you barely hear him from how far you've gone. You're getting a call on your communicator. You look, at first, you're expecting to see maybe Trevor. You look and you do a double take and you're just, oh, oh my. Wait, didn't I just see her, like, walking by me? Huh. It's Carla calling you. Say, Carla? How are you, darling? Mm-hmm. Well, Kane's been a little chatterbox I've seen lately. Uh, depends. I've had a bit of a busy afternoon, as I'm sure you can imagine. What, uh, what ails you, dear? Well, she, there's a lot of distress in her voice. Well, I need to talk to you about something really important, Alistair. Because I know... How you are, you... There's a lot of competition coming for you now. And as I'm finding out, my heart still beats for another person as well. (sighs) Oh, dear. Well, give me a moment. I just had to avoid the press. Uh, Apparently, they wanted me for an interview, and, well, I didn't. (laughs) That's my Alistair. You you don't like the limelight. No, which is annoying because... All of the merch, while interesting, flat out announces I am not just in the city. I am actively trying to scuttle the machinations of our current unbenevolent overlord. You, you, Carla, just wait. Do you mean to tell me there are little cute stuffed animals of you, stuffed dolls of you being sold right now? Not have you not been outside the stadium, dear? There are lines. Like it is a street festival. 
of just booths. I bought a t-shirt. It, it, so, so, Carlo turns away. You can hear her still saying, Celestial, um, we're, we're, we're going to have to leave here early because I'm about to break somebody's kneecaps to get me one of these Alistair dolls. Now, before you go, before you go all gangster on me, do note that I hadn't seen any of those. But I did see a couple of keychains. Uh, what would you uh, what would Alistair do? Wristband and again, T-shirts. I got the last one, so they may still be sold out. But eh. Carlos just my I, I will need the OK, back on important important point Mm -hmm. see me and kane agreed kane we promised each other that if we were to ever find someone we would tell them the full truth about us and that's how we would decide if that was really our destined one fair enough you know how i told you me and kane share the same body it was a bit of a trick to visualize all that but i do yes it's a little more than that. You can Go on. actually hear Kane's voice coming out going, Hey, uh, sis, you really sure about this? Um, yo, I, I like Alistair and all, but it, this is a really big thing to reveal to him. Are you sure about this? I love him. All right, then. You do you, sis. Oh, do, you know I'm still going to have... You know you're still... I'm still going to kick your ass in the mind palace. Yeah, 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 whatever. Peace. Did I just hear Kane? Yes. You can do that? Yes, because our father, when we were just being born and our mother, we were when we were little fetuses, he had us converted into old world tech. Huh. Me and Cain are biotechnology. Okay. It, <laughs> I mean, it, it is a... <clears throat> that is a quite a bit of weight on your shoulders, for sure. But considering... What we are trying to do and what we've been dealing with the past couple of days, I'm not sure that's surprising anymore, which is saying something, honestly. And I don't really see how that is pertinent to the whole I'm in love with multiple people thing. Well, unless I'm missing something. It's because I'm telling you this because you're one of the people I want to tell that to. That's fair. And two... Oh, God damn it, sis. You're taking too goddamn long. Alistair, she's just feeling she's feeling really awkward because it's Trevor, man. I mean, to be completely honest, that's kind of fitting, considering that he himself is awkward. It, her face is just bright fucking red. The best way to put this is if you were actually seeing it, what would be happening right now is that Alistair's mouth has formed at the back of her neck. Uh-huh. That's what's talking. God damn it, sis. And give me some oh, of that. You mean you mean Kane's neck? Yeah, Kane's uh, Kane's mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> so Kane's just and give me some of that drink. I'm thirsty. We I haven't gotten it. It's like how long have we been keeping this a fucking secret now? I mean, we've had to pretend that we do this weird, overly complicated transformation shit. When in all actuality, it's our body can organically shift between a male or a female body. Where that emphasis of the, there was this ideal of a Greek philo- philosopher that believed be, before man was a man and woman they were one androgynous sex. That's what oh, yeah. that's what the biotechnology were based off of. I think I heard of that myth. Something about two heads, four arms, etc. Et exactly, cetera. exactly, buddy. You see, see, sis, he's smart. He gets it. But yeah, that's what this technology was based off of, but they were never able to put it into effect because they never had identical twins that were just so perfectly in wavelength until me and my sister. uh, Never mind the fact that that's not how the myth goes. That's to explain why we yearn for people. Yeah, but... (sighs) Well, considering who your father is, I'm not surprised you perverted that on top of everything else. Exactly! Uh, Exactly! You know how awkward it is to share the same body with my sister, man? (sighs) Morning bathroom routines must be a bitch and a half for you too, huh? Um, hey, uh, Kane, you you know this isn't fair, bro. Carla, shut up. It's my turn. It's it's bro's turn. But yes, Alistair, it's very awkward, man. And you know what? It, I'm a I'm a precocious teenage boy, man. Of course, it, everyone's blaming me for what I did with Hemlock, and it, Carla's just. I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole. That that is that is the grave you dug by yourself. I will lay flowers at your feet, but I will not carry your coffin. Oh, don't worry. Trevor's going down with me for that one, man. <laughs> this ship ain't going down by itself. <laughs> Just do keep in mind that you do in fact share a body with your sister, so if you go down, so does she. Exactly. That's what I'm planning for how we're going to survive this. 
And Carlos, I do carry feelings for her still, so keep that in mind. I know. Ew! You just hear Kane's just gross! Ew. Oh, oh, God. I don't see how it's gross, as far as I knew, until... Well, you see, the thing is... told me. Well, you see, the thing is, I didn't remember exactly who you were, Alistair, but now since all my memories of you have come flooding back and you're like a brother to me, it's just awkward that I've seen you... Make out with... Let's just compartmentalize that, shall we? Here, you know what? Let me make this a little bit easier on you. So, Carla, we're doing that technique. I'm wearing a dress, Kane. We're in the bathroom, sis. God damn it. Fine. (laughs) You see half of her body starts to shift and composite. Half of it's Kane. The other half is Carla. Huh. You look like an extra from Victor Victoria. One corner of the mouth speaks, and then it's the male side. That's Kane speaking. Goes... (laughs) <laughs> Carla's just oh god damn it Kane this is weird Shut imagine up. it imagine it from my point of view it, it it makes it easier for it makes it easier for me to be able to talk to you man oh I know I'm just not going to let you live down the fact that this is in fact fucking weird big shit's going down no kidding so you know how Bertha hired that uh med person celestial she's a uh, Carla's best friend Kane well she is so shut up damn sis Anyway, so her name's Celestial. I right. found some I found some weird shit deep underground, Alistair. I'm talking deep. It was like some ruins of some kind of ship. This it I know we there's weird shit that goes on in Cyber City, but how open are you to the idea of aliens? You'd be surprised. Okay. Well, this was definitely alien technology. Fair enough. So I saw something weird and I thought I saw a body. So, of course, I'm going to take a person who has medical knowledge down there. Right. Well, you woke something up, didn't you? Kane, tell the truth. Yeah, we woke it up. Out of curiosity, this thing wouldn't happen to have spoken in a really, really fucking creepy voice and called itself Plagueus. They both just shudder. Yeah, yeah, it's him. That's the one. So apparently find it, we found out that it was our dad and that fucking thing that caused this, all of this. So I guess at some point in time, there was something called the Day of Reckoning. We got to find out what that is. That's apparently when, it, as you just said, everything went down. But That's what began the Corporal Wars. That's what put the cloud over Cyber City. That was the first decisive strike of Damien Leonidas. If I'm remembering the information that I've learned recently correctly. Yes, that's exactly what we found out as well. But it goes a little... What the other thing we found out is that that thing... Me and Carla were supposedly born so he, for him. For his body. To have a new body. Of course. Because it's never, never that simple. All right, so we have an ancient eldritch extraterrestrial, possibly extra-dimensional being who wants your collective asses for its new body. Yes. And it has, I'm going to say corrupted, but I don't exactly know how hard it had to work at it. Your father into, oh, what is the word that I'm looking for here? Apprentice. Well, that's a much nicer way to put it. We were going to say it's servitude. <sighs> Minion, errand boy. Well, we, we, we can make the list of insults later. Um, And everything since then has been because of that. Yes. <sighs> okay. I'm going to have to have a long talk with Grandmother about all of this. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's one other thing we have to tell you. Don't tell me she knew all of this and sent me somewhat unknowingly into this. So when that thing flashed memories into our mind. Yeah. We saw your we saw your grandma. She obviously knows all of this. <sighs> right. This that's why I said, Alistair, this is this is getting deep, man. We're in <laughs> We're, like, involved in some kind of secret fucking war that's been going on for, like, hundreds of years, and it's now coming to a head. And, honestly, me and Carla have talked about it together, and this is, like, the first time we've ever agreed on something, but 
We're tired of being fucking used, man. We've all been used. Everybody's using us and not even asking us. I mean, understandable. I hope I'm not part of that list. No, not you. Okay. Just making sure it's it's no, you're been a day of, and a half. You're part of the list of people who are just being taken advantage of. We're well, being that t- much I figured. I just didn't want to be part of the list that's also taking advantage of people. No. You, you, you do things the right way. At least you are up front and tell it what the stakes are. Carla's scared, man. Carla's just scared, dude. That's why she's like, oh, great. I have to come to terms that... I'm a person who doesn't just love one person. I love two guys. One guy's getting married. It, it's complicated, man. And then, of course, she has to share her body with her brother. And we've been keeping this a secret that we're some a composite. We're we're not even human technically. We're classified as what we've seen. We've seen our file folder. We're classified as a as a bio species. Yeah, and who does the classifying? That was Trevor's brother. That was. Uh, that was one of the last things he fucking did. <laughs> My point is that the person who's who classified you as non-human is probably not someone whose word you should you should take. And some good news on our part. Well, we've, there's good news. We've learned something more about ourselves. Well, that's wonderful to hear. It's um, we always like to call this thing uh, cyber snake, but we've been to so many different Ripper docks, and they've never heard of a piece of technology like this. I thought well, you said this was good news. Well, no, no, check this out. Watch this. Oh, please, no. I've seen those things. It's kind of disgusting. It's <gasps> so they open their mouth and a gentle. So just the head of the creature of the cyber quixotl pokes his head out. Now, I'm not going to freak you out, son. Um, hi. Um, um, you can call me Coddle. See, you you lead with the I'm not going to freak you out. But yet I've never seen a cyber snake because that's kind of what you're appearing as that talks and now i'm having a conversation with said item being Mm. you know the three old guys said you'd be a lot nicer it's been a bit of a day and a half and i had to just avoid some media please forgive me um i mean it's you know also you are kind of a creature living in another being's throat and even i have my limits um just to be completely honest (sighs) What's your name? Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl, okay. I wasn't sure if that was just your type or if that was you specifically. Coddle, you said I could call you, yes? Yes. Okay, Coddle, hi. Um, so if you're not a normal cyber snake, I'm betting you too are some form of old world tech. One of the best. And I have to ask this, just so I can keep working on the ever-growing jigsaw puzzle that is my life now. Where do you fit in? So these two dum dums, they didn't explain the. F- they don't know the full story, so I can't. Well, of course, I'm still going to call them dum dums. But deep in my mind, I have the protocols programmed in me. I oh, am good. part. I was part of the anti Ragnarok protocol. The three old guys to prevent to prevent it fully from falling apart and Ragnarok from happening. I am one of the keys to preventing it. Now, see, I I've read the old myths and Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Makes me worry. Yes. Interestingly, in the myth, the only giant snake that I know of, uh, sorry, giant serpent, because I'm I'm feeling snake might actually be an insult. Giant serpent would be something called Jormungandr. We go by Biddy Dave's different times, different places. Right. Which means that there's also going to be the wolf that swallowed the sun and the moon the so, giant wolf who so bit off he, the one god's hand oh I, I i i have to wonder what are the gods in this situation so all right we they so yes they got a little technical and they had a little fun the in the preventive measures i will let you know it's not a giant wolf you have to look for this that one didn't want want to be a giant wolf he wanted to be a giant cat because giant Cat is so much better than Giant Wolf. His code name was Cat Pelog. Admittedly, I am not familiar with that one. It is a it is based on the old old to- stories of King Arthur. The, ah. death, the death of King Arthur came from a giant cat monstrosity. But yes, he's a little dramatic. I believe he is he has he is in possession of a piece of old world technology called the Limiter Gauntlet. It is the only way to well keep his monstrously stupid power at bay. When his artificial soul was created, let's just say that it 
it was very overcharged, very overpowered. Uh, so so it has to be constantly siphoned or he gets a little battle crazy. He's not one of those uh, super prototypes, as you might call it. Um, Chris Cottle quickly cuts his eyes away. I'll take that as a yes. But yes, right. that, that would be your equivalent of what you were thinking of Finra. Right. I do believe that the equivalent of what you would think of as Thor is a member of the Death Squad. She calls herself Mama. Her real name is Cynthia. All right. So I'm getting a picture on what... <clears throat> so if you're the anti-Ragnarok functions, the gods in this case would be bio-modified? Yes, unfortunate. So I will tell you right now that it isn't a one person. It is a giant piece of life support. It is the Odin Protocol. It is meant to keep a person alive indefinitely, but at the cost of always being around the pillar. Why do I have a sneaking suspicion I know who's been using that little piece of tech? It takes a lot of power to power such a device. Like, say, a particle accelerator. Exactly. God damn it, Leonidas. But yes, it's unfortunately, this was all for him to bring about his wreck and bring about humanity's depths of despair, the despair protocol. <sighs> all for his master, Plagueis. Oh, you've, you've encountered that one. I've felt it. Yes, it's unfortunately a lot of our technology based on de- design. Yes. Well, that explains why old world tech is so insanely powerful. It is based on alien technology. Exactly. It's, I do not know much about Plagueis. He was only forthcoming about so many details. I will tell you that he scares the hell out of us. I mean, his name is Plagueis. That would worry I would worry more about the person who isn't scared by a name like that. Now, I can tell you, you are on the right track. Ian and Carla have relayed, I've seen their plan, that you are all Leonidas's bid for mayor. That's a great start. Oh, we have more plans, but we've been careful about vo- vocalizing them uh, good, because good. ears are everywhere. Good, good. There is one last piece of old world technology that is a bio, a piece of biotechnology. If you can secure this allyship with them, you will be one step closer to averting Ragnarok. Do tell. Last I remember, they have been calling themselves recently The Shape. The Shape. Their original code name was The Changeling. Alrighty. It is a hive mind of sentient nanomachines. The only thing is, what makes it special is that it's not just a massive cloud of nanomachines that just mimic the shape of something. No, it's as if it becomes, they've become a liquid. They are able to become anything, any kind of shape, any kind of texture. Anything is within their possibility as long as their minds work together. Hmm. Interesting. And where might the shape be currently? Last I heard, they've been working as a solo. I know several of those. Now, it's I am very happy that you are so you are so educated, Alistair. The reason why you need the shape, and as I told you, their code name was the Changeling. Right. Their true purpose is Nidhogg. Protocol Nidhogg. And you mentioned the particle the particle collider. Don't you think that's kind of like a world tree? Well, it certainly connects worlds together. You need him to eat those roots. Oh, only, the sh- only the shape will be able to eat the energy that that tree will expel once you guys do what you need to do. And you say this shape, this chameleon, has been working as a solo. Yes. Unfortunately, they've forgotten their destiny. They've, it's been so long. And how do I wake them up? Do you have a person? This I believe you are friends with Trevor. Have him take you to the leader of with the shape in the toe. Take him to the leaders of the gangs. But we need to find the shape, and that's what I was. And the best way to find him, he loves candy bars. Post a job and say the reward is his weight in Snicker bars. I guarantee you, you will have him coming to you post haste. Those nanomachines have a dreadful sweet tooth. 
Sugar does equal energy. It makes sense, actually. Alrighty. Now, my job is almost done. Because just as Kane and Carla have two sides, I have two sides. It's funny you mentioned my other side. As Quixicotl, I am the voice to link between the life of the land and the dead. Alistair, you do not know my voice, but I know it's... The doctors promised me that one day I would meet someone who is friends with my with my daughter. I believe you call her Hemlock. Yes, uh, she... Well, I call her Aunt Hemlock, actually. She was part of the Edge Runner team that my grandmother was a part of. Her real name is Ashley, and my name is Richard. I was her father. Aha! Uh-huh. I can only speak for so much longer. The soul energy that was linking me to Quixicotl is fading away. And Quixicotl will become Jormungandr. Well, no offense to you, uh, Richard, or Cottle. Uh, save that energy in case we need it. Then for I now, a- I-, I will sleep. I have a feeling that you're not done yet. Quick Cottle smiles and just goes back into goes back down Kane and Carla's throat. Their eyes go back from rolling back into their head. And they're, were you able to get some information you needed? Oh boy, do I have some information? And he relays the information that he got. Oh dear God. Okay. All right. I know what I need to work on. I will. I will talk to Bertha about placing a job ad for. For, for something simple, and that the payment will be literally a box load of baby roofs. No, no, no. It has to be Snickers, specifically. Okay, you're right. Snickers. We will make sure it is Snickers. And so, actually, I have a few places that I was going to post to. Probably, um, actually, probably better than the usual runner boards, uh, due to their, uh, nomad linkage, if you get my meaning. I understand. All right, well... I know what I need to work on and to get accomplished on our side. I wonder. What are you thinking, Alistair? Well, just... It was something that I was thinking of earlier when the reporter was announcing I was a terrorist and Trevor's been blacklisted. I had this idea of using Leroy's abilities to augment some mannequins into body doubles and faking our deaths oh that that's a good idea and from what we've seen that mr cyberpants can do it that should be something he should easily be able to accomplish yeah i wonder though do i still want to do that it would actually be a good idea especially if we can heavily implicate damien leonidas was the one who caused our death maybe not directly but through his orders like say a, a clear leonidas lapdog was the one responsible just really shake the people's well okay nobody really has faith in him but you know you know i actually have heard a rumor alistair yes so apparently so some of the androids and cyborgs that are in robopolis there there have been unions between, you know, just normal people and, and them. Mm-hmm. I heard a rumor that apparently a child has been born to a half synthetic person and a human. And that my dad wants that cut off. Have you guys, like, heard anything from Robopolis that there's been any strange, like, murders or anything? No, but I know who to ask. Yeah. And put that in your back pocket. That sounds like a lead. But honestly, my thought process was seeing about getting you two separate bodies. Kane's just, oh, glory. For some reason, Carla looks and just thinking in horror. Oh, dear God, the things my brother are going to do. To be completely honest, I was thinking about making two copies. Uh, One as a body for Kane and leaving you with the body but then also making a copy of the body for you i like it. that's a great idea Alistair, this way you-, you could live how and with who you want and there would be no real downsides to being in love with multiple people and it's with at this great moment a touching moment between you two a hollow screen lights up a very angry looking news reporter sitting there we go live now to the podium damien leonidas Alistair quickly patches Kane and Carla in on this. 
citizens of Cyber City. I've let you down. I've kept valuable knowledge from you. Oh, here we go. A dangerous murderer that has taken the lives of so many individuals. A list starts to go up and Kane and Carla are like, we did not kill those people. We only targeted fucking monsters that work for Leonidas. They yeah. harmed so many innocents. But you know what the worst part about it is? It's my own child. <laughs> oh, you asshole. My own flesh and blood. I've failed my wonderful child. How could I fail as a father? Good people of Cyber City. I'll show you what a great mayor I'll be. Not by bringing my child to some horrible form of justice and murder, but by welcoming him with open arms. Help me find my wayward child. Bring them home to me. Let's make Cyber City a family. Brought to you by Damian Leonidas for Mayor. And you see a picture of fucking Kane plastered on the screen. Alrighty. Kane, that means you're probably going to have to lay low for a while. <laughs> Two, that means we're going to have to release that data right quick and in a hurry. Are, are you fucking serious? I thought this was our trump card that we could... That, but he, he flat out was just... No, it, what the fuck's going on? Apparently, we've rocked the boat a little more than we thought, and Leonidas is going for the throat, which means we have to respond in kind simply to keep our ahead pace. Well, you're, you're right. I'm going to have to. Carla, you're, you you take full control, sis. Um, I'll stay back in the mind palace. Bro, so Carla's full control of the body again. She's just, he's, he, he's, oh, God. I, he's, I've never seen. He's I've, panicking and scared. Yes, I know. I, I've never seen, seen him like this, Alistair. We, we, oh God, Alistair! I'll I'll contact you. I don't want Celestial to get worried because we've been. We, oh God! Yeah. No, you focus. We're she working kisses, on this. She kisses her screen. It leaves a, a lick mark, and she just goes, "We'll get through this. Talk to you soon. Stay safe out there." Your communicator hangs up. You finally notice that you've gotten several messages from D asking you to come to the van. You imagine something just stupid. You can hear Jazzy still searching for you, so of course you're going to avoid oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, firstly, there are some things that need to be done. Yes. Messages are going to be sent out. One is going to be to Grandma. I know a lot more than you told me, and we are going to have a conversation. And that last part will be in all caps. A conversation is in all caps. It, we, we literally go to where the nomads are, and she checks her communicator, sees what you just wrote, and she's just, oh, oh dear, he he found out. Yeah, He's I'm going assuming, to be so disappointed in me. Yeah, I'm also assuming that there's some nomads who are watching the music festival, and they see the news yeah. report. Oh, yeah! Which means Grandma is about to get a minion of her own telling her, you need to see this. He's so the same time that you sent that she sent one to you saying oh boy you better believe we are going to have a serious conversation young man after the shit she's pulled she dares pull the young man on me oh i don't think so <laughs> you still have are you going to say her response back <laughs> actually yes it simply that maybe not not as sharp but it's like after what hands like after that beacon talk, sending me into Cyber City, knowing not even half of what I should, you call you pull the, in quotes, young man on me? No, dearest grandmother, I think not. Now excuse me as I try to survive the minefield that I'm currently dealing with. Love you, bye. That's literally a drop the mic moment. There's nothing she can... She, she, mm, she, she's just stuck because she's she writes something, deletes it. Writes something, deletes it. She's at that moment right now. You're go And then... Let's Anybody see. else you're sending a message to? Oh, yeah. To Leroy to talk about the mannequin idea that I mentioned to Kane and Carla to see if we can do something about that, especially with the news announcement that just went, which he also tells uh, Leroy about. We're probably going to need those body doubles. He also lets Trevor know about that. Um, 
he he warns everyone that Leonidas is trying something fucky. Oh, and you are that you, they have to step up their game. It's and funny by you everybody, just said that. yeah, and by everybody, I mean everyone. Alistair, you got a text that just says a question mark on it. Do you read it? Only after putting it through the most rigorous of scans from my, you know, anti whatever. It's straight, it's straight from the personal home of Damian Leonidas. All right, Brian. From his personal communicator. Oh, I'm putting that in my back pocket. Lay it on me. Hello, cousin. Mmm. Bet your grandmother didn't tell you that, did she? But anyway, cousin, I'm not the one keeping Harmony prisoner. Give me Cain and Carla, and I will give you Harmony. I will plead with Plagueis. Cousin, this is not, this is not Leonidas speaking. This is not Ken Shi Huang. This is Kai. This is Kai. Please consider this. No tricks. This is my direct line. I will only speak to you. Alistair's going to sit there and, and you think see for a it, moment. The last thing that says is Ni Hao, Alistair. Mm. Okay. Alistair is going to try and spin this to his benefit. I will consider it. If you can assure me, Kai, my cousin, that dealing with you is safe, that neither your other half, shall we call him, or his master, whether he prefers that term or not, can know about us contacting with each other. You can understand my hesitation, I hope. Dot, 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 messages back. This is our safest way to communicate. My other side does not even know about this personal line. This is my last way for my last bit of my will to come out. Tell Bertha I'm sorry. Tell Angie I'm sorry. Tell everyone I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it just keeps repeating I'm sorry. He'll send a me- I'll send a- Alistair will send a message back. I'll tell them. And that's all he sends. Now, I want to clarify something to you as the GM. Mm-hmm. Just so yes. you know... Just just so you know, and so there's a audio record of this. When Alistair said he'd consider it, he did, for all of two seconds. I, I kind of figured that. He then took that thought, crumbled it up like the scrap paper it is, and tossed it into his mental trash bucket. Because there is no way that he's trading one person for another, even if he does, in fact, love Harmony very much. Alistair is aiming for as complete a win as he can get. He knows sacrifices will have to be made and he's going to try and minimize those since we used the chess analogy earlier there is absolutely no way he's going to treat Cain like one of his pawns and sacrifice him so easily or so early in the game furthermore Cain is a friend so he's going to make damn sure that he comes out of this alive so Alistair is going to try and use this to his benefit in as much as that if he can get with Kai and use Kai as a way to get to Leonidas or Quan Shi or whatever he's calling himself, and through him, Plagueis, then he will absolutely and maliciously abuse that. At the very least, he can give Kai some rede- uh, some death equals redemption. Because right now, as far as he knows, this is a ploy from Damien. But if there is a little bit of a kernel of the person who he was, then perhaps he could be redeemed through actions. So he wants to at least give Kai that chance. As you go through all this in your mind, you send out the last bit of your messages. You reach the van. Weird. There's no D. And you just, well, let me just open the side door. You swing it wide open. And then the best way to put this would be, it's as if Judy's laying on a bearskin rug, just looking at you. And she says... I may not be able to fight with her in terms of singing, but I'll tell you this, Foxy. I got her beaten other ways. Alistair enters the van and shuts the door. And he sits down, and he just looks broken. Judy was going to look at you with full of seduction and everything. But she sees your face. And in just a big well of emotion, she breaks down. And she just starts crying on your lap saying, I'm sorry, Alistair. I'm so sorry. He, then, hu- <sighs> he hugs her and goes, no, you misunderstand. I am not mad at you for this, although what the hell. I just need someplace quiet 
And Mm. this is the best I got right now because I have found out some things that make me believe I am woefully, woefully underprepared, underskilled, and undertalented to do what I was set up to accomplish. So she puts on, she buttons up her shirt. She rubs the side of your face, Alistair. And Alistair, you've been through so much, so I'm going to give you something very special. Oh? You're going to get a very rare moment. You get what you want. A moment of silence to just rest. Judy caresses your head. She holds it. She holds your face in her chest. And you get to sleep. And God, did you need it. Yeah, I realize Uh, that uh, Trevor's not the only one who's been going full tilt. And then as we're ending this beautiful moment for Alistair finally getting a moment to rest, Jazzy and I are finally, like, tracked you down to the van. But D... Having woken up, he looked inside the mirror. He looked inside the window, saw you peacefully sleeping. It, it's literally that moment from Fist of the North Star. He turns to to Jazzy Meyer. His shirt explodes, and he's just take one fucking step toward this van, and you wake up my brother. I'm going to beat you to death. Damn. Do you understand me? My brother's been through enough bullshit. I want him to have at least two hours to fucking rest. Cameraman tries his luck and takes one step forward. The camera shatters. D didn't even fucking move. The cameraman's face goes white. He goes, I'm going to warn you right now. My brother doesn't know this, but I am actually next in line to inherit the term title of master from my grandmother. I have just opened the celestial door. This is your last warning. Leave. Your brother gets buffer by like five more times. Oh, damn. Oh, yes. He's basically gone. He basically looks about on terms of All Might right now. Oh, damn. And he's extremely mad. Understandable. He goes, this is your last fucking warning. Jazzy just gives a nod and goes, we'll be leaving, gentlemen. (laughs) And they turn. Your brother turns. He turns, deactivates the opening of the celestial door, turns back to his usual goofball self, and then just goes to sit next to the van, gives it a light little tap. Love you, Alistair. And he goes to sleep outside the van. And that's where we will end this episode of Cyber City. Goodbye. I think the girls with the nails done.